How's it going, Flare Fishing fam? So today I really wanted to go fishing. Uh, the thing is, I'm having my truck worked on because I've got a big road trip coming up, so I want to make sure everything is good to go. So I literally Ubered back home to film this video because I don't have a truck. So I really can't go fishing, even though the fishing is pretty bad right now, and I probably wouldn't catch anything, and if I did, it might be a couple. So anyways, instead of going fishing and attempting to catch some more flare fish, I am going to make a Tackle Tip Tuesday video. I don't know if I'm going to make this a thing. If you want this to be a thing where every Tuesday, I make like a tip video kind of like a throwback old Andrew Flair outdoor video uh, leave a like let me know down in the comments down below uh, if you guys really do like it I'll continue to make them because I actually enjoy making these tip videos not more than vlogs but this kind of just brings me back to my roots uh, making these tip videos like this before I get started I want to let you guys know that I started up a new fishing program where you guys can win free fishing stuff for posting pictures wearing some flare gear. If you want more information about that, I will leave the email down below and put it on the screen there. Just shoot them an email, say that you're interested, and they will send you all the information that you need. So the video today is about my panic box. Now, I'm not, I did not make this this term up. I have not seen a video on this, so I decided that's, that's the video I'm gonna make today. For my Tackle Tip Tuesday for today, uh, this is the video that I'm gonna make. It is also referred to as a confidence box. Basically, this box right here is all that I would take when I'm going bass fishing. So if I was going anywhere in the country, I would only need this box and I more than likely could catch some fish. So in this box right here is all of my confidence baits, all the baits that cover all the bases from top water to moving baits to bottom baits to finesse to power fishing. It covers everything and it's really, it's really not that big of a box. You could definitely go smaller than this. I, I have not filled this box up at all. But this is something that, that, like, if I'm going pond fishing, I just take this box and I've got everything I need. So in this video, I wanted to show you guys everything I have in here, why I selected the lures, the colors that I selected, and why I selected them. And, you know, whether you're new to bass fishing or you've been bass fishing for decades, I think you should probably be able to take something from this video. At least these are the baits that work for me living in Nebraska, you know, fishing in the Midwest and in Texas a lot. Um, for those of you guys that maybe are down south or way up north, this may vary a little bit. But overall, you guys should be able to take some tips from this video and apply it to your local lakes and catch more fish. So that right there is what I have in the box. Now, I'm, I'm going to go quick. I'm not going to try to make this too long. I don't like making these talking tip videos too long. But I'm going to make sure I go through thoroughly so you guys can take everything from this video, soak it all in, and then go catch some fish. So the order that I'm going to go in is, like I said, top water to moving baits to bottom baits, and then probably finesse baits is, is probably where I'm going to go last. But these are really just organized in, uh, in different sections where I've got some top water, more top water, moving baits, all moving baits, some bottom baits, moving baits, and finesse. Is that and then terminal tackles kind of mixed in there somewhere? So, like I said, it's not super organized. This is something that I'm constantly taking baits in and out and swapping them around and just adapting the box to the conditions I'm going to be fishing. So, to start off, my favorite frog fishing, of course, I carry three frogs with me pretty much at all times. These are really the only frogs that I ever, ever really need. Um, you know, you can throw different frogs and they work. But these three frogs, not not the brands wise, but just like types of frogs, these three frogs are my favorite. So we've got a regular natural colored popping frog. Then we've got a popping black frog. Black frogs, I don't throw too often, but sometimes they work. And then a natural color regular frog. Sometimes the bass want a popping frog. Sometimes they want a regular frog. So I carry one of each. And as far as the black one goes, it could be popping or non-popping. Just make sure you have a black one. I preferably choose to go with the popping because that's just my favorite. I like popping frogs. So for frogs... Those are pretty much the only three. You could go with like some whites and some browns. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure you've got a natural and a black and then a popping and a non-popping. And it doesn't really matter what combination you mix in. Those right there are my favorite. Now, continuing on top water, uh, I like some some hard baits, not, not the soft frog ones too. So I've got three right here. So I've got two walking baits and then a little popper. As you guys can see there, just a regular popper. It could be a really small, if you're fishing small ponds, you might want a really small one. If you're fishing big lakes and you're trying to imitate big shad, you might want a big one. And then for the, the walking baits, I go with a bigger size and a smaller size and usually a shad pattern or like a frog color like this. Usually shad patterns seem to work no matter what. I don't throw this frog one really all that much. So I would just stick to shad patterns with the poppers and the walking baits and then just make sure you've got a little bit smaller one, like a junior and then a full size one and then a popper. Those are the three top water or walking baits or hard baits that I use. And then occasionally I will throw something like this, which is kind of like your little your little buzz and toad. I don't throw it very often. The only time I throw it is when I'm really just trying to cover water. If I'm trying to, if I'm fishing mats and there's just grass everywhere and you can't really, you know, you can flip and pitch a little bit or you could throw your frog. But throwing something like this is like, 
you know, you got to walk it kind of slow and take your time. And especially for fishing in tournaments for you tournament anglers, that you might want to use something like this, something that goes really quick, and you're going to miss a lot of fish. A lot of fish are going to jump behind it, but that's okay, especially if you're pre fishing for tournaments, because then that way you're kind of locating the fish and you could always follow up. So if you're throwing, whoa, if you're throwing this bait and you get a bite, grab this bait, you know, grab another rod with this one on it, shuck it out there and catch that fish. Sorry if I'm going so quick, but I don't want to make this too long. And then lastly for top water is you guys know I like throwing some buzz baits. Really, the only two colors I throw black mainly, I mainly throw black ones, and then like a white or white and chartreuse. I just have white and chartreuse here. You know, it seems to work. White works too. Um, but for some reason, black. I don't know. I've just had really good luck with just an all black buzz bait. If you have never caught a fish on a buzz bait, get an all black one or an all white one or whatever you want. But those those three colors. So white and chartreuse, white, and then black. That's all I've got for top water. So. All of those baits, you know, you could pretty much cover everything. If you're fishing in open water, you know, you could throw the, the walking bait, schooling, schooling shad, uh, throwing that buzz bait around the grass edges, and then, of course, frog fishing inside of the grass. Now moving to moving baits. You guys know I love throwing the bladed jigs, and I stick to pretty much three colors. As you guys will notice, a, a good pattern for me is I choose three. The reason being is because you can pretty much get away with three colors for almost anything and cover all different water clarities and, and you know, shad based, forage and crawfish based and bluegill based. You can pretty much cover everything with three. So for the bladed jigs, I go with a white and chartreuse or a white. You know, like I said, it doesn't really matter whatever you prefer. I prefer white and chartreuse and then a bluegill pattern. Just it could be bluegill or it could be green pumpkin, anything that imitates a bluegill or a bass. And then black and blue. Now, where would you pick these? More in the springtime, I throw this little bluegill one. For some reason, bass don't like bluegills next to their beds in the spring when they're spawning. Or if the water's fairly clear, I'll go with this just because it's natural. It's green pumpkin, it's natural. If the water is dirty, I go with a black and blue. And if there are shad, uh, maybe crappie, if you know the main forage is shad or crappie, then I go with the uh, the white and chartreuse. And then same thing goes with the spinner base as far as colors go. Really, I don't throw any black and blue or green pumpkin spinner baits because, you know, this spinner bait imitates a group of fish. You can see this is a fish, this is a fish, and then this is maybe one or two fish. You know, bluegill and, and that type of stuff, they don't really group so tight, but shad, shad group up nice and tight, so I usually stick to shad color. So I'll go with a white, you know, a shad pattern if, if the water's fairly clear, and if the water's got a little bit of stain to it, I'll go with just an all chartreuse, all chartreuse skirt, chartreuse blades, just gives a little bit more flash to it, especially if you're going after some northern pike or some musky, that, that chartreuse one seems to pretty much kill it. That's just a good overall bait. I catch a lot of bass on that all chartreuse one, but mainly day in, day out, if I'm throwing spinner bait, it's gonna be a white one. Continuing on moving baits, so we've got some, a uh, couple hard baits here. One of my favorites, you guys see me throw a ton, is a square bill. A square bill crankbait is a great bait, just good all around. I stick to three different colors. I throw a chartreuse black back, I throw a bluegill, and then a shad, as you guys can see there. That pretty much covers all the bases. If the water is dirty, you, show the, you throw the chartreuse black back. If it's somewhat clear, you throw the bluegill or the shad, depending if they're eating on bluegill or shad. You could always throw a red one if they're eating on crawfish, but most of the time, if I'm, if I'm targeting fish that are eating crawfish, I'll throw a jig or something of that nature. I don't usually throw square bills for, uh, for bass that are eating on crawfish, but you, of course, can. Moving on to a good early spring bait, especially for you guys that are just starting to to fish this spring. Uh, you guys wanna throw lipless crankbaits. Now I usually stick to three different colors. I stick with a red. Red is really good in the spring. And then sometimes like a chrome, if it's sunny outside, like a chrome, which is which is kind of like this guy. And this and the reason why I bring this one up is because this one is a small one. So sometimes you wanna keep like a little bit bigger size and then a smaller size. But then like a good all around one is this dude right here, like a sexy shad. So if the water's a little bit stained, not super clear, not super dirty, that sexy shad seems to do it. Where you wanna throw lipless crankbaits is usually in the spring around like grass edges like, over the tops of grass is where I usually catch them and then again another spring bait is a jerk bait now you can throw a couple different colors one if you're up north and you're around perch uh, you could throw something that's kind of like this is actually John Beast he's probably gonna get pretty pissed that I have this uh, but you can throw like a, per a perch one or you can throw a shad one like a little clear translucent one like this or like a chrome anything that imitates a shad but a good springtime bait is a is a jerk bait, so I usually stick to those two or three colors for them as well. We're almost done, folks. I'm sorry if you guys are getting tired of hearing me talking. I know it is. I don't like I like these videos because they help you, but I don't like them because I'm just talking and talking and talking like a thousand miles an hour because I always just talk fast and I don't know why. Now we're we're past all the moving baits. So if you guys can't catch any on the top water and you can't catch them on those any of those moving baits, then you probably want to go to the bottom baits. 
and one of the best big fish baits of all time is a jig. Any any pro fisherman, anyone that's been fishing a long time will tell you that. And again, three colors is usually what I like to stick with. I like to stick with the black and blue, which is which is probably my favorite. I probably catch the most fish on a black and blue. And then you get a green pumpkin, so you might want to throw this around the spawn. Again, they don't like the bluegills. And then a crawfish. Now, none of these have trailers. Of course, you want to put like a little craw on the back, uh, but like a little crawfish pattern. I either go with black and blue or crawfish for the most part. If I'm going to throw a, uh, a green pumpkin like this, I'm probably just going to throw um, you know, a chatterbait or something if they're really chasing bluegills down. But that's where you want to throw that. If, it, if the water's dirty, stick with the black and blue. If it's clear, go with the green pumpkin or the crawfish, or if you know they're eating crawfish. And you can mix up the colors. This is like a crawdad brown. You can go with like an all red one. You can go with an all black one. It doesn't really matter, but that's a great bait to drag on the bottom, to flip it. A jig is the most versatile lure, for sure. You can flip and pitch it. You can drag it on the bottom. You can do pretty much anything you want with it. And then moving on to uh, another bottom bait that's just a little bit different than, than this jig is a plastic. So this box, you may notice, does not come with plastics. Yes, I know, like, I couldn't just take this box and want to go flip plastics, but plastics aren't that hard to carry. You can just grab a Ziploc filled with, you know, some Sanko, some ribbon tail worms, some craws, and you're pretty much good to go. But right here, I just like a little wobble head. It's basically just like a jig, but it's on a piece of plastic. So it's just a little bit different presentation. And where I would throw this instead of a jig is maybe you got some more vegetation and you want something that's a little bit more weedless. Um, you'd go with this, like a green, I usually pretty much only throw this in green pumpkin. Sometimes I'll go with a black or like a black and blue if the water's a little bit dirty, but that's just another variation. If you guys are getting tired of throwing the jig, you can throw something like that. Moving on to lastly is finesse. Now, if you can't get bit on any of this, I've got two finesse baits that are my favorite. Um, one of which actually, actually I've got three, one of which I don't have with me, but this one, this one is kind of jacked up. It's not supposed to look like this, but it's a little Ned rig. This is like, this is where I throw this bait if I'm like, just dying to catch a fish not even a big one just a fish i'll throw a little ned rig which is just a jig head and just a little piece of a worm and then you know this catches some bigger fish but it's also a little bit more finesse and that is a shaky head so for colors wise you know i'll go with this the watermelon or the green pumpkin but if the water's dirty you really don't want to go finesse if the water's dirty but if you absolutely have to then just go with the straight black or a june bug and then the one bait that i did include here was a drop shot. Now I've been throwing a drop shot a lot lately because you, you know you can keep it pretty much still and keep it above the grass and catch some fish when it's cold. Um, and that's where the uh, you guys can't see probably all that well, but this is terminal tackle. This is all my hooks, weights. I've got wacky hooks. I've got shaky heads. I've got drop shot hooks. I've got flipping hooks. You mean you, you just want to have you know a good variety of weights in a good variety of hooks. Just keep them, you don't need to keep them all separate, like all pretty looking. Yes, that's sometimes nice, but for a panic box, it's not ideal. So I usually just throw all my terminal tackle in this little one section here. And I'll have everything that I need. And then lastly, is I will take something like this. If you guys haven't seen this, they're just like, it's a little color marker. So if I want to color the tips of this crawfish orange, if I notice if I catch a bass and it's got a crawfish in its mouth and it's got orange pinchers, then I can color it orange or chartreuse. They have different colors for this as well. That's something I throw in my panic box just to give me a little bit edge. It has some scent to it. It's got some color to it just to change it up a little bit. Well, folks, I talked a thousand miles an hour and I know, so I'm sorry if you guys had a hard time keeping up with me talking, but you guys can tell this is a long video. And I just kind of went through every single thing that I have in my panic box. And like I said, this was not very packed at all. I normally have probably double or triple the lures in my panic box because I'll have duplicates. You know, if I'm throwing a frog and it's on, you know, they're eating the frog really well, I'll throw a couple of them in there. Same thing with chatterbaits or anything like that, but this should give you a good idea of what to bring with you. This may seem like a lot of lures and maybe you guys aren't able to afford all of these lures and I totally get it. You know, it's not, I was not born with just bass fishing lures in my hand. You know, I had to work up to where I could get a good collection going, but this should give you guys a good idea. Maybe if you can only afford one of each, then I give you an idea of what color to choose. You know, what color frog, what color walking bait, what color crankbaits. And I didn't include any deep divers because normally when I'm throwing a deep diver, I'm on the boat. And this, is, this isn't really a boat box. This is more of like a pond fishing, bank fishing box, if that makes any sense. Because if I've got a boat, I don't need one box. I can put like 20 boxes in the boat. So this is, so if you guys are wondering, you know, why the hell I didn't have any deep cranks, that is why. I'm not going to make this video any longer. If you guys want to support me and my channel, I've got these new shirts. I've got some hats. I've got some who rags coming, some stickers. I really do appreciate the support. When you guys buy my merchandise like this, it helps me afford to travel. You know, I'm going to Texas later this week. That stuff isn't free. Plane tickets and gas is not free. You guys support me. Um, I can make content for you guys to enjoy. So thank you guys so much for supporting me and my channel. 2017 is about to get crazy. Thank you so much for watching and peace. 
Too many thoughts on my mind, I can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing. I don't need no help, I don't need opinions, so don't waste my time then. I just been living online, my city don't show me no love, and that's fine.